Coming up on the Big Ten Women's Sports Report, fueled by Gatorade. It was a season unlike any other we've seen before. And now Caitlin Clark has worn the Iowa jersey for the last time. We look back on the legendary career. Plus, she's a former Buckeye who has had tremendous success on the ice and plays at the next level. But her greatest victory was not as a hockey player, but a cancer patient. And she may not be the tallest player on the diamond, but at Penn State, Emily Maddock has certainly come up the biggest in clutch situations. It's time to play ball as the show starts now. With a record 12.3 million viewers, Iowa got revenge against LSU in a rematch of last year's national title game. Thanks to Caitlin Clark's 41 points, Iowa advanced to their second straight Final Four. With over 14 million watching, Iowa stormed back from a 12-point deficit to beat perennial power UConn in an instant classic 71-69. Hannah Stolke was huge with 23, as the Hawks became the first Big Ten team to advance to consecutive title games. Taking on number one overall, South Carolina, Clark started red hot, scoring 18 points in the first quarter. But Carolina's height and depth was too much, as they won 87 to 75 to beat Iowa and finish as the 10th Division I team to go undefeated in a season. However, Lisa Bluta reminded the team they got to go on this incredible journey together. Do not hang your heads, do not. Yes, we're sad that the seniors are leaving us. That's tough, that's the tough part about this. But we got to do this together, right? We got to have this journey together. Nobody's ever gonna take that away. I'm proud of y'all, you guys, so much, each and every one of you. So do not hang your heads. Celebrate the fact that we were here. Celebrate that we got to do this together. All right, please? Because that's what's important. You guys impacted so many people this year in a positive way. I mean, think of that, all the joy you brought to people, all the kids that you helped. That's what it's all about. Yes, you love a shiny trophy, but the impact that you had on young women in this sport doesn't get tarnished. It will always be there. You have raised this sport to a new level because of the way you play the game. Don't let that, <coughs> don't ever forget that. You can bring that to other people. You can bring that to other people as you go along, okay? Let's bring it in. Hawkeye pride. One, two, three, Hawkeye pride. pride. And so Iowa's historic season came to an end in the national championship game. A remarkable accomplishment as they became the first Big Ten program to reach the title game in back-to-back -back seasons. The first Big Ten team to make consecutive Final Fours. And none of it would have been possible without the six-foot guard from West Des Moines who transcended the sport. We just watched the four college years of Caitlin Clark and a question sticks out. What can't she do? We are watching one of the greatest basketball players of all time. She came to college as a basketball prodigy, but no one thought she would be this good because no one ever had been before. It's Caitlin Clark's world and we're all just living in it. Her freshman year in Iowa City, she led the country in scoring, which is remarkable because a freshman had only done that one other time in the history of women's hoops. But it made even less sense seeing how unselfish she was, second in the country in assists that rookie season. People started to notice, like NBA star Kevin Durant, who tweeted, she belongs in the league right now. Her sophomore year, fans were allowed back into buildings, and all that did was energize her, becoming the first woman ever to lead the country in both scoring and assists. The sports world couldn't help but notice as she was becoming a crossover star. At the end of her junior year, her list of accomplishments became comically long, including winning the National Player of the Year, breaking Big Ten single season records for scoring and assists, and having a triple-double in the Big Ten Tourney Championship game, a 40-point game in the Final Four. 
By the time her senior year arrived, she had changed women's basketball forever. The Hawkeyes tipped off her final season with an outdoor game at Kinnick Stadium, breaking the all-time attendance record for the sport. I'm so lucky to be in moments like this. However, Caitlin Clark's true impact has been best seen by the faces in the crowd. The memory she was making game after game for lifelong Iowa fans and plenty of brand new ones. She became an event. Sellout crowds for every single home game. Record crowds for most road games. Almost single-handedly, she brought along millions of viewers as she broke the record for the most watched women's basketball game for seven different TV networks. Her flair for the dramatic happened time. Here's Clark, she fires, and it goes! She hit it! All things are possible when Caitlin Clark has the basketball. And time again. For the win! Yeah! In total, leading her team to one regular season Big Ten championship, two Final Fours, three conference tourney titles, and a combined 109 wins. When she became the greatest scorer the sport had ever seen, of course, she did it from way deep. Classic Caitlin Clark. Here comes Clark. How will she go for history? in women's college basketball. Maybe you liked her scoring the most. Maybe you liked the unrivaled and impeccable vision on her passes. Maybe it was her passion on the court or the constant logo threes. Or maybe you enjoyed that she acted like an assassin while wearing an all-American Iowa smile. The greatest women's player there ever was? Maybe it's debatable. But at the very least, she'll be in that debate forever. Her now famous Hawkeye jersey was two twos, but she was one of one. Because now that her college career is over, it turns out there's nothing Caitlin Clark can't do! And so the Big Ten in Iowa City says farewell to arguably the greatest player ever to touch a basketball in college. She leaves with her name all over every major record in the NCAA and has collected more awards and accomplishments in four years than most programs have done in decades. Now off to the WNBA, Caitlin Clark leaves Iowa as the best there ever was. Still to come, Ohio State attacked the ice with a singular goal all season, get back and win the national championship. And we look back at a former Buckeye who helped lead OSU to postseason glory. But it was the battle she faced off the ice that proved to be the biggest win of her young life. The Big Ten Women's Sports Report is fueled by Gatorade. Gatorade, fuel tomorrow. The Ohio State Buckeyes got their revenge on the defending national champs Wisconsin in the national title game. Freshman Joy Dunn was the hero in the third period, scoring the game's lone goal and giving the Bucks their second natty in three seasons. The first was led by a dynamic senior class, with one particular player having to battle against all odds to find her way back on the ice. There's who you want to see. There's my nice baby. He misses you. <laughs> I'm going to get ready okay, soon, love so love you too. Okay. Bye. Such an honor to be able to be driving to this game right now. I think she realizes that she could inspire somebody. This is about Madison Bazal is going to show you that you can do anything in this world, even when you get knocked down. I have a twin brother named Connor, and we grew up playing hockey together. Loved it right away. Maddie was very shy, and she would go on that ice, and her shyness went away. She was out there having fun. Her ability to play hockey really stemmed from skating. Yeah, she could skate very, very well. Did she foresee that it was going to be a professional team? Eventually, no. But she was going to do whatever it was going to take to get Division I. I visited Ohio State and immediately fell in love with it. 
she was grinning the whole visit. And I'm thinking, oh no, far away from home, I'm not sure if I'm into this. And she didn't want to go visit any other schools. From the beginning, Sophie Jakes, Gabby Rosenthal, Peyton Levis, and I clicked. We went in the summer before freshman year and we were like, the workouts were so hard. We were just like, are we gonna make it? We always laugh about that because we're like in hindsight, that was just such a small part of our journey. A lot of great things, um, not so great things. My sophomore year, I had felt a lymph node in the side of my neck. Then we got sent home for COVID. Started watching it more. And then I went to the doctor at school. They said we need to remove it. I got a phone call and that was the worst, the worst phone call I've ever had in my life, the worst moment of my life. My diagnosis is nodular lymphocyte, predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. All blood cancers rise from the bone marrow. The difference with some of part of these cells, which are lymphocytes, is they are born in the bone marrow and then they go to different parts of the body. A lymphoma is basically a growth of one of those lymphocytes. It was very like shocking to me and scary to me. And then immediately called my parents. It was November of 2020 get the phone call and Maddie is hysterical and she said I have cancer and I think I was in shock because I said no you don't they don't just call you over the phone and tell you have cancer and then she started screaming and said I have cancer uh, it was un unreal we just want to get out there and hug our daughter being 12 hours away you know you just can't jump in the car and be there in the moment. Thankfully, you know, Nadine called her and said, I'll be over in five minutes to pick you up. It was an emotional day. Coaches prior to me had recruited her, but when you're recruiting kids, you look parents in the eye and you tell them that you're gonna take care of their baby girl like they're one of your own. I just remember like when she told us, I was just like heartbroken. Like, what do you do, you know, when your best friend tells you that? My dad was able to come to the first two appointments with diagnosis and then treatment plan. My mom was also there, but couldn't come into the hospital with me because of COVID. For the rest of the journey, they were from afar, supporting me in any way they could, but because of the COVID restrictions that were in place, my teammates and staff at Ohio State was my biggest support system. When something happens, such as one of your players having cancer, how do we come together? We obviously had a, a number of treatment options kind of presented, um, working with the oncologist. The route we went uh, was infusion treatments. After my first treatment, when I woke up from like my nap, I felt so sick and Peyton came and brought me a cookie into my bedroom. <laughs> and that like, it's like so small, but like meant so much to me that she was checking on me during that time. <laughs> I didn't want to be like a burden to anyone. Her ultimate goal was, I want to get this treated, but I want to keep playing. I want to be a member of this team and, and be an elite member of this team. On Tuesdays, I would have my treatments. So I would miss practice on Tuesday. I would be at practice the next day, uh, ready to go, prepare for the weekend of games that were coming up. Never missed 172 games during those treatments. It's just incredible. She elevated everybody else's game because you didn't have the right to complain about anything when Bazal was going through what she was going through. Our class was really special because we hadn't even made the tournament our freshman year, and then sophomore year, COVID canceled the tournament, and then junior year, we had a look at the tournament, but lost in the semifinals, so I think senior year, it was kind of like everything had built up to this moment. So happy that I was able to raise a national championship trophy. Treatment was once every two months at that point, so it was less of a constant in my mind. It was the craziest, best moment of my life. My last treatment was in July. Then I got the all clear in September that I was done with treatments. It was almost a three year journey at that point. Going through this cancer scare, two things saved Madison, hockey and Easton for Dot. My most sweet, precious angel, baby. <laughs> I love him so much and FaceTime him every day. The type of cancer she has 
it never goes away. But once you maintain it, it's kind of like being a diabetic. If you can maintain it, you'll totally be just fine. We have done tremendous advances in cancer across all tumors. The fight will only be over, we can cure all of them, or at least we can transform cancer, less of a cause of death and more of a chronic disease. When I was ringing the bell, the PWHL draft was happening in the next few weeks. To get drafted and play for Montreal is special. It just goes to show when you, you know, perseverance and hard work and dedication and all those other characteristics that she displayed over that period of time. Deep, deep. Got her ready for that opportunity at the next step. Oh, yeah. I just remember thinking, gosh, to get to play professional, you could only have dreamed of this. There's so much to take away from Biz. Makes gr you grow up really fast. I think that every day is a blessing. Every moment is an opportunity for something great. Take that when you have the chance to. You have a 21-year-old young woman living away from home, dealing with cancer during COVID, nonetheless. So a lot of these appointments, we couldn't even go with her, too. She is the toughest athlete I have ever come across. Pretty wild to think back about everything that has happened. A setback is not gonna stop me from continuing to pursue my dreams. Still to come, we go on the diamond in Happy Valley where Penn State's Emily Maddox shows big time players come in small packages. And in lacrosse, Northwestern just did something that no road team has ever done before in the Kathy Reese era. Wow, what she's been able to do on the field and her ability to execute, and she's been able to execute at a high level. Obviously one of the best hitters in the Big Ten, one of the best hitters in the country. So to have seen Emily's progress from her freshman year to now has truly been outstanding and very proud of her. That one's rocked down to right field. Emily Manick with a two-run RBI double. To earn first team all Big Ten accolades last year, it was really gratifying to know that all of my hard work eventually paid off in the end. She is one of the most underestimated players in the Big Ten. A lot of coaches and players look at girls and they're, if they're a bigger stature, they're like, okay, like this girl's gonna probably hit a home run, probably hit a double, but M does it all. I think it's hard for pitchers to be able to throw to such a small target, to be totally honest. She is small, but she's mighty, and she's just a spark plug for our team. As I'm walking up to the batter's box, I try not to think too much. I look at the defense first to see where they're playing me and see if there's any opportunities that I have there in order to get on base. And then I try and clear my mind. If we're at home, I listen to my song, I start singing it a little bit. Get in the right mindset of just like, you know, this is a game, I can do this. Maddox sends that one into right field. It's back, it's deep, it's forward, hits the top of the wall. And Maddox is in at third. My favorite thing about M is that she is a Swifty, but you wouldn't know it unless you know her very well. There's a football game I didn't realize. I thought it was just Taylor Swift's Taylor Swift concert again. Concert again. <laughs> Emily is like the biggest Taylor Swift fan I have ever met in my life. My favorite Taylor Swift era is Folklore, but I mean, you can't go wrong with any of the era's albums. If I had to pick a Taylor Swift song that reminds me of Emily out of the songs that I, I know, I would have to say Shake It Off. After I have like a bad swing or something like that, I'll kind of shake out my arms. She's gonna shake it off and She's gonna to continue to grind, she's gonna stick with the process, and she's gonna to continue to find ways to get better. She's a great kid, I've been saying that this whole time. 
I know that she's going to have an incredible year to close off her Penn State career here. She's going to find a way to be the best version of herself. Northwestern, Skane, knifing in, bounce shot and a score. Skane, firing through, bouncer and a score. Madison Taylor able to get that past Sterling. Skane and Taylor have put on an offensive show tonight. And for the first time in Kathy Reese's reign here at Maryland, 18 years, the Terps have lost a home game to a conference foe. Northwestern does it in impressive fashion. For the first time since April of 2006, the Terps have lost a conference home game. Northwestern's dominant 17-9 win in College Park was the first league home loss in the Kathy Reese era. Thanks to the dynamic play of Izzy Skane and Madison Taylor, number one NU got their first win at Maryland since 2006. Still to come, only a select few end their season with a win and cutting down championship nets, but even fewer can do so and celebrate it with an epic water gun fight. The Big Ten Women's Sports Report is fueled by Gatorade. Gatorade, fuel tomorrow. Shauna Green has totally transformed the Illini Hoops program. Last year, she led them to their first NCAA tournament in 20 years. This year, thanks to a massive second half by Makira Cook, the orange and blue took home the inaugural WBIT championship. Coach Green never lost sight on chasing down a championship this season. I mean, it, it's huge. Anytime you can win a championship and compete for a championship, um, it's special. And anytime you can cut down nets and, and I forgot how much I love confetti falling um, and, and cutting down nets. It's the best feeling in the world. It, it truly is. And, and then it makes it even more special, I think, this year just because of what we've been through um, and, and how they just never gave up. I mean, it, like that's what this is about because this is bigger than basketball. It's about life, and, and life's not perfect, and you're going to have a lot of adversity in your life. And how do you respond to it? And how they've responded time and time again and kept just kept working and, and you know, roll up your sleeves and just get to work and stay together and believe um, it, it makes this really, really special. Be sure to follow us on our social media channels as we keep you updated on everything happening from the mat, track, rink, pitch pool, diamond and hardwood in the Big Ten. Thanks for watching and we will see you later.